Coming up, Scott Ross interviews the engineer of Grand Funk Railroad, Mark Farner, about his new vision for music. And now with a really great person to first interview, here is reporter Scott Ross. Wow, that's a big opening. I, I wanted to be Ed McMahon there for a minute. You don't look at all like Ed McMahon. Thank tell you. you. <laughs> You're welcome. You, you weren't into uh, rock and roll as such, were you? Did you come out of that kind of a background? Well, I did, but I was, I really liked jazz and, and a, kind of a different, I mean, I was alive during that time. Oh, Not I'm sure. that old, you know. But I didn't really get into big-time <laughs> rock and roll. All right. Well, these guys were big-time rock yeah. and roll. I, there are about 76 million baby boomers out there going to remember Grand Funk Railroad. And that was the name of the group. Mark, Don, and Mel. Very big group. This was one of their outstanding little packaging jobs. Um, these guys sold 17 gold and 11 platinum albums from about 1969 to 1976. They turned out a series of hit songs you may recall, We're an American Band, Closer to Home, Heartbreaker, Locomotion, that's just a few of them. Well, today we want you to meet Mark Farner, one of the former members of Grand Funk Railroad. Mark is still playing rock and roll, but now it's a brand new message. <laughs> Okay, all you rock and roll fans, how many of you out there remember Grand Funk Railroad? Well, Grand Funk is considered by some to be the forerunner for today's heavy metal music. They were loud, they were outrageous, and in the early 1970s, they were enormously popular. It was just a vast amount of exposure, uh, instant acceptance, and people, it, it was a new kind of rock coming out of Detroit, you know, assembly line rock and roll, kind of like, you know, right to the point with the, with the message and, and driving it home with the music, you know, three-piece, very uh, loud, and we uh, got a lot of criticism for our loudness, but it worked. Meet one of the driving forces behind the success of Grand Funk Railroad. Beyond the loud rock and roll of the band, was the searching heart of Mark Farner, who wrote some of Grand Funk's biggest hits. Mark explains that his Christian background gave a spiritual quality to many of the songs he was writing. When I was nine years old, my father died, my own father died, and I, I, just, I couldn't accept it mentally. I just was wandering around the house, not going to bed at night, crying all night, and I remembered that through having to go, being forced to go to church by my great-grandmother, God bless her soul, she uh, she introduced me to Jesus or how to get there. Anyways, I never accepted the Lord prior to this, but I, I went to the Lord then, and he comforted me. He was, it was beyond human comforting. This is what I needed. He came in at nine years old. I just wasn't ready for what, you know, a Christian is supposed to be and what a Christian is really supposed to do with his life. I backslid for years, but the Lord never abandoned me. He was always faithful to answer my prayers. Closer to home, uh, one of Grand Funk's biggest songs. I got up in the middle of the night after praying before I went to bed for the Lord to give me music and words that would touch the ears of the people he would want touched. important question. How did Jesus Christ apprehend Mark Farner of Grand Funk Railroad? Three years ago, I was at another low point in my life. My wife had left me, and after a couple of weeks of just searching my soul, and I had the boys, we were at home, and uh, I'd been going to various churches. I'd go to Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday and Thursday, trying to, trying to find, you know, I knew I needed Jesus, but I was getting a lot of... Uh, hell fire and brimstone condemnation things that I just didn't I wouldn't go forward 
to tell people where I was at or how I was hurting. Um, I finally walked into a little Assembly of God church. I just listened to this 76-year-old preacher up there just getting down, and every word he said was from my heart. I mean, the Lord put me there in that last pew. And I was sitting back there weeping, and when he gave an altar call, I ran down the aisle up to that altar, and I just got back with the Lord, and I just prayed forgiveness for the sins and for being away from him, and I just asked him to take my life back over in full strength and make me what he wanted me to be. Part of what Mark believes God wants him to be is an evangelist of sorts, mixing old Grand Funk songs with new Mark Farner numbers, which convey the message of the gospel. And he's doing it, not in churches, but in bars and concert halls. Jesus I want to talk to all the old Grand Funk fans, especially because there were seeds planted there before I even know I, I knew I was planting seeds. And I want to talk to those people. I want to talk to their kids. I want to talk to people that come into a place like this that that are searching because you know bars are full of backsliders too. We found out, and the Holy Ghost goes in and busts them big time. They come. What of them? Do? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So uh, th these are the kind of people that we're, we really want to touch because the Lord didn't call me to be an entertainer of Christians. Although entertainment is a byproduct of what I do, I believe that my ministry is evangelism to the sinner. I just want to be a good servant for the Lord. That's no matter what it, what capacity. I just want to go into churches, schools, do benefits, do bars, and wherever the Lord will put me. I ain't any different than you. I got love in me just like you. Do you love me? I love you. And I know where that love comes from. I got an abundance of love, and I thank God for it. Because I got right with Jesus Christ here about three years ago, and i just been full up with him. And I'm proud of it. So I give all the glory to him now. Yeah. 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 I tell you, I, I, uh, this guy, uh, bless you, Mark, he, the cameramen were having trouble shooting this thing because they were sliding on the stage from beer swill. Oh my beer. goodness. At one point, Mark was singing a song, and a, literally, a pitcher of beer went flying across the stage. He, had to, he stopped the end of the song and said, listen, guys, I want you to have a good time, but somebody's going to get hurt. <laughs> you know, and then he, then he sets up this Judgment Day blues thing, you know, and he says, have you ever been low down? Have you ever really felt bad? Have you really had the blues? Well, let me tell you about the lowest down blues you're ever going to have, and it's the Judgment Day blues. Now, after the concert, Shirley, he goes backstage and he says to people, uh, any of you hear what I was saying out there? And a lot of them go, yeah, and he said, if you're really interested, I want to talk to you. And they come backstage, and he sits down with them one by one, talks to them about the Lord, and leads them to Jesus, prays with them. He's, this guy's seen a lot of fruit, but he's out on the edge. I mean, he is really out on the edge, but I, I love, love it. it. I think I, you fantastic. know, it sounds to me like Mark is doing exactly what Jesus did. Yeah. which was to go into where the, the publicans and the sinners and the, the wine bibbers and all the things that he got criticized for doing, but they came to know who he was because of where they were. That's right. And that's exactly Absolutely. what he's doing. Thank you, Scott. You great, are Great, great story. I love it. <laughs>